Hey guys, it's Richard from Grafting Dragon Fruits, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to bake dragon fruit bread. And these are all the ingredients that you're going to be needing, and of course you're going to need a mixture so that way it's going to be a lot easier for you, but it's okay to do it with your hands also, it's just going to take a longer time. So these are the ingredients that you're going to need, there's going to be six of them, and we're going to start with some bread flour. So when you use uh, some flour, make sure you use a high protein one, so that way the yeast has a better uh, time with proofing it up and it rises a lot better. Um, and here is 300 grams of dragon fruit. You can use red dragon fruit, you can use purple dragon fruit, and these are just dragon fruit that I bought at the store, so you can go ahead and use them if you don't have any at home. Here I have five grams of yeast, and here is 80 grams of sugar, and this is five grams of salt, and we have 40 grams of unsalted butter, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put all these recipes inside my mixer and then get started with mixing it, okay? So here we go. There is one thing I do want to mention is uh, when you're putting the yeast and salt in together, make sure they are apart or you can add the, add the salt in after, okay? Because the salt kills the yeast. So I had learned that when I was baking, trying to figure out this recipe and it didn't go too well for me. So I'm sharing that with you guys so you don't make the same mistake I did, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add the flour first. So this is 500 grams of bread flour. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that all in there. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the dragon fruit. This is the red dragon fruit. This is 300 grams of it. Um, what I do is I would cut into little tiny pieces. I take a fork and I mash it up, and this is what you see after it gets all mashed up like that, okay? So it makes it a lot easier to handle and mix once it's kind of mashed up like that. But you can cut in cubes and put it in there as well. All right, here we go. We have our five grams of yeast. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the corner here. I have my 80 grams of sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and put my sugar in. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a little mix first to get the yeast to be with the dough. And then after that, I'm gonna add the salt, okay? So I'm gonna put it down, make sure you lock your mixer. I'm gonna use the lowest setting first, okay? And that's you're gonna be using that the whole time. So here I go. So we're gonna just let this mix through a little bit so you see that the dough has uh, the color and then I'll, it'll be okay to put in the salt. So just give it a few more seconds. Okay. So it looks about okay for me to mix in the salt now. The yeast is mixing the dough well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put my salt in there. And now we have salt. So the butter, you're gonna be adding after you mix the dough, just a little bit. You're gonna wanna mix in so you don't see as much bread flour in there anymore and that the consistency is more like a dough. So we're almost there. We're almost at the point to add butter. Okay, so this is what it should look like once you're re about ready to add your butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my 40 grams of unsalted butter in, just like that. And as you're mixing it, the dough is gonna wanna rise. You're gonna wanna try to press it down so that it can mix evenly, okay? And I'm gonna let you guys see what I'm talking about once I start. And there goes our butter. This is what I'm talking about. It kind of rises like that and just be careful. I like to push it down. Sometimes I even lift it back up. Like that. So I'm gonna lift it up. We're gonna put it back down because there's probably too much dough in there. But once it starts mixing all together, it's gonna be really well in there. So don't you worry, okay? All right, so we're just gonna turn this on. We're gonna let this mix for about 30 minutes or until we do the window test. We're gonna stretch the dough and you guys are gonna see what the dough looks like when it's about ready. So I'm gonna come back in about 30 minutes and let you guys see when the dough is all ready for us to go ahead and let it sit and rest to rise, okay? So see you guys in a little bit. 
All right, guys, so it's been exactly 30 minutes since I've been laying this dough mix in my mixer here. So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when it's about ready. So there are a few tests that you can do. One is you're gonna just pull the dough and it's called the window test. You're gonna stretch it as much as you can to get it as thin. And if it doesn't rip right away, then you know it's ready. So that looks really good to me. It's stretchy and it's not too sticky anymore. All right, so we're gonna, we're ready to take our dough out. I have my cutting board over there that I already put some flour on so that way nothing is sticking. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on there and then we're gonna start measuring it out to 90 grams each, okay? And that's gonna make you guys 10 breads. So here we are. And here is my scale that I have ready. Sorry, just here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put some flour on here too because I don't want anything to stick and make sure some is on your hands. You're gonna want this in grams. And here we go. We're just gonna start weighing the dough out. We're gonna do 90 grams each, okay? And I'm gonna show you guys how I form them. So we have about 89 grams and this is gonna make it 90 so perfect and then we're just gonna go ahead and form these up what I do is just kind of stretch them like this push it up give it a little nice thing like that and then I just start forming balls and this is what it's gonna look like if it's still not pretty you can always stretch the skin just reform it again this is what I do it takes practice, but you will get it. So don't you worry. If I can do it, you can do it too. So just like that. Okay, so this is what you're gonna have. Something like that. You're gonna do 10 of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting all these balls formed and weighed out. And once I finish, we're gonna let you guys see where our next step is and then we're gonna move on from there, all right? See you in a little bit. Okay guys, so I have finally finished all of the balls and I just finished rolling my last one. They are all weighed out to 90 grams each ball. And now we're gonna go ahead and just let them rest and rise and double in size, okay? I do not know how long it's gonna take, but we're gonna go ahead and time it. And once we do have an appropriate size that I look that's okay, I'll let you guys know how long it took me, but it's gonna be different for everybody because the room temperature is gonna play a big role on how your dough is gonna rise, okay? The warmer your temperature is, the faster it's gonna rise. But if it's a little colder in your home, it's gonna take a little longer. So you can expect from one to three hours for this to double in size, okay? And once they are ready, I'm gonna be turning these into mini bagel bites with cream cheese stuffed in them. So they're gonna be dragon fruit bread. I'm gonna try to mix some cream cheese with dragon fruit as well. So then it's gonna give it that nice red color in the cream cheese. And hopefully it's gonna taste really good. And then I'm gonna be taking a bite and eating it and sharing with you guys how it's gonna taste, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead. We have all of our dough here ready. You're gonna to wanna to cover this so it doesn't dry out. You're gonna to wanna to keep it moist as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I just have some saran wrap here. I'm gonna make sure that we wrap and make sure there's not any holes that's gonna let air in because you don't want it to accidentally dehydrate your dough that you've been working so hard on all morning, right? Okay, so we are getting really close to our final steps here. This is probably gonna be the longest part of the waiting, but once this is all nice and dry, then we're gonna be ready to bake. And then once we get to the baking part, I'm gonna show you guys the instructions on how to get these nicely fresh and baked. All right, so let's let these rise, and I'm gonna see you guys once they double in size. Now we are gonna be making the cream cheese filling for our dragon fruit bread. And it's just gonna be cream cheese, salt, and if you have leftover dragon fruit from your dragon fruit bread, you can go ahead and use that. There's not gonna be an exact measurement. We're just gonna add it in until we see a really nice color with our cream cheese. And then we're gonna go ahead and bake it with our bread once they are finished doubling in size. Okay, so first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get some cream cheese. You can use original or low fat, it's totally up to you. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just empty this whole thing in there, okay? And you're gonna wanna change your um, mixer to a paddle 
Uh, before we were using a dough hook for our dough, but now we're gonna use a paddle so that way we can mix all of the cream cheese with our ingredients that we have here. It's a little stuck, let me get a spoon. I'm gonna wanna get all of that cream cheese in there, it's very important. All right, and for salt, you're gonna only wanna use one eighth of in salt. This is a one four teaspoon. We're gonna use one eighth of a teaspoon. So it's gonna be about half of this, just like that. Go ahead and add that in there. And okay, we're gonna put the mixer down. The dragon fruit is gonna be slowly added into our mixer as we go. All right, so here we are. So we're gonna let that mix. And here we are, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of dragon fruit at a time until we get a color and consistency that you really like. You might not need, need too much, okay? So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. It's looking a little pink in there. It's starting to become a really nice color. We're gonna keep on adding because the white is just gonna make it turn more pink and I want a very vibrant color make it look really nice and really yummy for our dragon fruit bread, bagel bread, our mini bites that we're gonna make. Still a little pink. I just want it to be a little bit more vibrant, so we're gonna keep on adding. So you can do this at home. You can add it slowly like this until you get a color and consistency that you really like. And this is starting to look pretty good. I might add a little bit more just to get it to be a little bit more vibrant. It's kind of uh, like a pastel pink right now and I want a very vibrant pink. So we might can just add the whole thing, but we're gonna just go ahead and slowly keep on adding it. Okay, and I think it's safe for me to add the whole thing in now. And it should be just how I want it. Okay, we're gonna continue to let this mix, let it go through thoroughly until you see that there isn't any more white in there and that all of the dragon fruit has mixed with your uh, cream cheese very well. And then we're gonna go ahead, I have an ice cream scooper here. We're gonna go ahead and scoop it and even out the scoop and we're gonna do 10 scoops because we have 10 breads that we're baking. We're gonna fold it in, in with our bit bread once it's all done rising and then we're gonna bake it after that, okay? So as you're waiting for those dough to rise, you can work on your cream cheese filling just like how I am. Okay, we're getting very close. It's starting to look very good. And I would say that this is totally good. All right, so next thing you wanna do is make sure you preserve all of your cream cheese. Go ahead and take off your paddle. I'm gonna go ahead and just use what I have here to get the remaining cream cheese down. Okay, get as much as you can. All right, guys, isn't this really nice and pretty? Check that out. It's uh, very cool and it looks really yummy. So what we're gonna do now is I got some parchment paper. We're gonna scoop out 10 scoops of this and then we're gonna go ahead and freeze it. And when we're ready to go ahead and fold everything together is when we're gonna take it out the freezer, okay? So we're gonna do 10 scoops now, just like this. Okay, here's one. Two, three. Oh, it's getting stuck in there. Oh, sorry guys, let me just compress this down so it comes out a little easier. Okay, there's three. Okay, so I'm gonna work on this, get my 10 scoops. And then we're gonna go find some space in the fridge and put this in the fridge. And then once the, all of these are done freezing and we're ready to go ahead and put in our bread, then you guys can see the next step, okay? All right, so get your cream cheese all ready and then we're gonna move to the next step. So I'll see you guys once we start mixing this and folding this in with our dough. See you guys in a sec. Now we are ready to go ahead and take our cream cheese that's been chilling in the freezer. They're pretty stiff now, so it's easier to handle. And we're gonna go ahead and take the dough that we've been letting proof. It has been sitting for about three to four hours. 
it's been a little colder in my house, so it did take a little longer. It can take a little longer for you too. Um, just make sure if you touch the top and it's not sticky, then you know that your dough is ready. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna be taking this dough and putting the cream cheese filling inside, and we're gonna create some mini bagel bites with cream cheese filling. So this is the dragon fruit cream cheese that I've already made. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and flatten this out. We're gonna put it right in the middle. And you're gonna take the corners and you're just gonna fold it up on top, just like this. And then you take the other one, just like that. So each corner, you take this corner until it forms into like almost a dumpling, just like that. You're gonna fold everything, pinch it together gonna flip it right upside down and try as best as you can to form it into a ball again and here we go just like that and you have yourself a bagel that's ready to bake sorry it's a little sticky but this is what you're gonna have I'm gonna do one more so you guys can see how it's done and then go ahead and finish the process and then once we are ready to bake we're gonna go ahead and get our oven to be ready by preheating it and then we're gonna put it in and i'll show you guys the step on how to bake it without burning the top and making it look really pretty and really delicious all right guys so again you just take each other corner and match it together take this one just like that it's my first time baking and doing this so if i am able to do it you are able to do it as well and it's just simply like that you have it all folded flip to it and you form it into its ball and there you have it another perfect bagel oops a little sticky that's why we got some ham spray that i already sprayed on here all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these fold all of the cream frozen cream cheese into our dough here and then we're gonna get ready to bake it so i'll see you guys once we are gonna get to the baking portion okay so I have finally finished getting all of the cream cheese folded into my dough and now we're ready to go ahead and pop it in the oven and bake it. I have preheated it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and we're gonna put this in. First, we're gonna spray water, just like this. You're gonna wanna keep it moist. And we're gonna cook it for five minutes at 400 Fahrenheit for the first five minutes. And then once we finish it for the five minutes, we're gonna take it out lower the temperature to 345 Fahrenheit and then bake it for an additional 20 minutes. And you're gonna to wanna to put a little cover on top so that way it prevents it from burning just like how I did. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and set our timer for five minutes. And once it is ready, we're gonna come back and bake it for an additional 20 minutes. See you guys in five. Okay, so it has been five minutes and our timer just rang and now I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with some more water. I've lowered the temperature to 345 Fahrenheit and now we're gonna bake it for an additional 20 minutes. And as I'm baking this, I'm gonna go ahead and open it after a 10 minute mark and spray it with water one more time once it hits 10 minutes and then bake it, bake it for that time for 10 minutes and then, then you're gonna be done, okay? So here we go, we put it in, we got the water on, we're at 345, we're gonna set the timer to 20 minutes and once it hits the 10 minute mark, I'm gonna go ahead and open it again and spray it with another coat of water and then we are done. So once we are getting to get close to being finished, I'll show you guys the finished product. We are so close. Okay, see you guys soon. We finally finished baking our dragon fruit bread and I just took it out five minutes ago and it's still pretty warm. I'm super excited to cut the inside and let you guys see how pretty and delicious the insides are. So let's go ahead and crack one of these in half. So this is the one I'm gonna cut. So we went ahead and filled all of these with dragon fruit dough, uh, dragon fruit cream cheese filling. And now we're gonna cut to see how it looks on the inside. And here we are, moments of truth. Wow. Here is our dragon fruit bagel with dragon fruit cream cheese inside. And it is looking absolutely delicious. Look at all that and look at the cream cheese. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a bite and I'll let you guys know how it tastes. Here we go. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Well, that is good dragon fruit bread. 
that cream cheese just completes the bread. It gives it that little extra flavor that you need in there. And I love how the bread on the outside is really nice and crunchy and it's really soft and chewy on the inside, as you can see. This was so delicious. Oh my gosh. Go ahead and give this a try. You guys are all gonna absolutely love it. I promise you guys. So that was it. This is how you're gonna make dragon fruit bread and you can use it and utilize it any way you guys want. So if you guys like and enjoy this video, please hit the like button. If you guys have any questions about our dragon fruit bread, go ahead and leave in the comment section below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. And if you guys wanna see more grafting and dragon fruit videos of mine, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that way you guys will miss a single thing. Have a wonderful day now. Bye guys.